Hey everybody, I hope you're doing great and I'm really excited this month to be able to bring you an extra video. One of the cool things about going live is it opens up my time and it allows me to do some intuitive development videos. This is one of those and it was inspired by the February reading for Aries uh, in 2020 of this year. And I talked a little bit about manifestation, but I realized it would be much better suited in a longer form video like this. So I'm going to refer all signs to this video this month and I wanted to get it out in a timely fashion as well. I'm going to be talking about manifestation here. And I think it's really important as we enter into this new year. So for some of you, if you're watching this right before February, you might be trying to manifest love or harmony in relationships. You may also be trying to just bring in opportunities um, in your life, whether it's a, a new business or a passion project, whatever your heart wants to go into over the course of the next couple of months, I thought manifestation would be a really good topic to talk about. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with it. I also broke it down into six parts that have worked for me. I want to talk about those six parts first, and then we can maybe relate this to a real life example. And I might wrap up the video with a meditation as well. So the first thing that I think is important to remember when it comes to manifestation is that thoughts are power or powerful. But I would also say that you are powerful. So these two things go hand in hand. Let's talk about the thought component. So a lot of times people will look at what's going on in their life and just think, you know, I'm lucky or I'm not lucky or other people seem to have all of the opportunities in front of them. When you start to assign thoughts and power and value like that, they become sort of like self-fulfilling prophecies. So what I'd love for people to start to try over the course of the next couple of months, depending on when you watch this, is to begin with thinking, I have the power to control or change or shift my luck, my life, my opportunities. This is where the you comes into this. So you are powerful. And as a result, your thoughts are powerful. So what we have to start to um, kind of do here is take some ownership for what's going on in our lives. So if you find yourself going into a negative thought space, thinking, this will never happen. I'm not smart enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not good enough, whatever. I want you to kind of cut that thought off and start to think, I'm ready for change to happen. Change is starting to happen. Today could be a great day. Let's see what comes through. Open up the possibility to be surprised in the best possible light. That's step one to manifesting. So take your thoughts and reprogram, reprogram them rather because they are powerful. Take ownership over them because you are powerful and don't be critical. Start to think about possibilities. Now, I think it's good when you're doing planning to, of course, plan for a worst case scenario. But when it comes to trying to create something in your life, if you're always focusing on the worst case, then you can't actually allow for something better to happen. So, yeah, get your insurance plan and, and, and your plan B and all of that sort of safety net in place, but then start to think, what if this happens? Instead of thinking, what if it doesn't? Start to think, what would I do if I achieved this new goal? If I got the job that I wanted? If I got into the relationship that I've always hoped I could be in? If I am independent and successful or whatever it is you're trying to bring into your life? Take the what if uh, and really kind of say, instead of what if it doesn't, what if it does? And what would I do next? And start to get on that positive energy cycle instead and build up to something amazing. So once you realize your thoughts are powerful, once you realize you can change them, and then you begin to change them and you focus on what's possible, then you have to do probably, uh, well, there's two other things you have to do. Be specific. So if you're trying to create something in your life, um, like a relationship, and it doesn't exist, you're kind of, you're single right now, you're trying to find someone, be really specific in the attributes and the qualities that you're looking for in someone. Because if you're not very, very clear on your vision, be prepared to be surprised. So I said, be specific or be surprised. If we were to take this and translate it to a tarot card, it would be the two of wands. You're holding what it is that you want in your hands. You can see it, you can feel it, you can almost touch it. And it's going to bring about the three of wands, which is you start to see it coming into your life. So if you're trying to bring a partner, a lover in your life, you would say, first of all, bring me a partner, not a teacher. So this would be someone who really wants to exist side by side with you, celebrate your joys, your successes, but they're not going to sit there and try to um, show all of the weaknesses in your life. 
So you really want someone on the same energetic level. So my energy or higher, help me meet their energy if they're higher. Um, and then I would also kind of be specific on what you're looking for. I want someone that is available, who's ready for a relationship, who has an open heart, who has great communication skills. If you're looking for a family, someone who's ready to begin a family. If you're not, someone who's just happy being with me, if I'm enough, if we're enough for each other. Really get that laundry list of things that you want, qualities in the person, qualities that they have uh, treating other people, similar interests, like get that clear picture and then hold it in your hands. And then the most important thing after that is kind of like let go or let God. Um, and when I say God, I mean sort of like universal flow, but it, it kind of helps to have that because it's, a, it's an easy mnemonic device. So once you've fully formulated what it is you're trying to create, it could be a goal, winning the Olympics, it could be uh, a relationship, partnership, it could also be something like finishing something in your life, going back to school, getting a GED, whatever it is you're trying to do. See that, feel it, start to set into motion whatever it is that you need to go towards that path, and then just let go and let the momentum carry you. Trust that the universe, whatever your version of God is, has your back, and is going to create opportunities around you. Every day then wake up and expect the best, going back to the programming that we talked about, which was the possibilities hashtag, which I made here. So reprogram yourself that it's happening and it will happen very much sooner than you think. Rather than thinking this is gonna take forever, think this can happen really fast, it could happen tomorrow. I hope it happens tomorrow, start to open up, but then let go and then just be present. Because once you've done all of the work, Releasing and paying attention, I think, are the most important pieces that get missed with manifestation. So for many of us, it's easy to start to think about what we can do, to start to own the fact that we need to change our thought process, to focus on the possibilities, to be specific on what we're trying to create, to actually put a plan in action. But then sometimes what we do is we strangle the, the growth because we start to freak out when we don't see an immediate change. Um, and we think, wait, it's not working. And then the universe, which is really your partner in this manifestation exercise, starts to think, wait, you lost faith already? You have to be patient, persistent, and present. I guess I could have put all of those on this, but be present kind of summarizes all of that. Patience, persistence, presence. And in doing that, it will come through. It's like uh, many of you who follow me on Instagram know that I love gardening. I love plants. Obviously, I have tons of flowers around me and they're all alive. You guys ask a lot, are these real? Yeah, they're real. Uh, but when you are growing something, I have a lot of like cacti and succulents on my porch. They take a long time. I may wait an entire year to get a blossom, but it's beautiful when it happens. I continue to water it, feed it and watch over it for the course of a year knowing that when that blossom comes, it's going to be worth the wait. I don't lose faith that it's going to come through for me though. And lo and behold, some of the, the plants that I have will actually bloom two or three times in a season even though they're supposed to do it once. So know that your passion, your persistence is going to create something in your life. Just don't give up. You have to do your part. And that's probably another piece that I could add to this tapestry, which is you can meditate all that you want, but you have to do the work. I remember a yoga teacher that I had back when I was um, learning to teach saying that uh, there was a student of hers that would just sit at home all day and say, I'm trying to manifest prosperity, but they didn't have a job and they didn't work and they never really did anything but meditate. Meditation is powerful. Don't get me wrong. But if you do not follow through with action, it's just meditation. I know it's frustrating because really at our core, we are energetic beings. And just like the thoughts, which are little impulses in our organic brain here, um, if we were out in the ether, the energy itself would be enough to create action. But on this physical plane, we have to move the body. We have to create um, action around us to push the momentum. So it's a 50-50 thing. See it, do it, and then it starts to happen in your life. Um, the seeing it and the thinking it combined with the physical work that you're going to do to try to make it happen is going to be key. One of the easiest examples to think about is an athlete. If they're trying to prepare for the Olympics, it might be anywhere from two to four years that they're going to go into training before they get there. And then once they're there, they're going to have to really put into practice all of that um, training. And that's when the spiritual component comes in, trying not to psych themselves out of something. 
So you're going to have to do the work like the athlete to get to the medal stand. Um, but once you kind of go into that final race, then you just let go. You trust. You just allow for the muscle memory to take over and know that you can do it. So combining the physical with the metaphysical is really powerful. And when your metaphysical stuff gets in the way, then you can actually start to refocus and do something in the physical plane. So if you start to psych yourself out and worry about it, I would say put your attention on something else. Don't get into negative thoughts. Don't worry too much about it. Don't get angry if the timing isn't happening the way you want. Just put this thought in your head, which is tomorrow's another day. I could be surprised by something positive tomorrow. Today I'm going to shift my energy into something that's more receptive. For me, the most powerful moments of manifestation have happened when I listen to that little whisper of intuition in my head. Uh, one of the biggest decisions I made back in 2000 was to move to California. I couldn't explain why, but I just kept thinking every day, you have to move, you have to move, you need to go to California. And lo and behold, everything in my life changed for the better when I did that. I didn't worry about finding a job when I came out here. This was the only time in my life that I've moved or made a decision without having a job. I moved across country, um, sold a lot of stuff, got an apartment, got a P.O. box, got everything, and I just thought, it's going to work out. And I did. I found a job within a few weeks. Uh, I do not recommend that to everybody. That was an extreme case of manifesting, but something deep inside, I just knew it was going to work. Um, and there's been other examples where I knew when it was time to leave or when I could find a new job or when someone was going to contact me. Uh, so I was like, I, at one point I thought, okay, put this website together, put a contact form, you're going to hear from someone. And then a week later, I heard from someone. And for me, many times I just know to open the channel up, whatever that channel could be. It could be going on social media, it could be getting an address, it could be trying to go for a certain interview because I just know the timing's right. You're going to have to somehow put yourself out there to know that, uh, let the universe know I'm ready for this. So whether that's applying for a job, getting business cards, putting a website together, sometimes even deciding I'm going to join an association of professionals so that I can meet the right conduit. When you start to put all of these pieces together, the universe then sees, okay, they're ready. They're starting to get out there. Um, they're taking themselves seriously. So know that these little steps are a big deal and that that whisper of intuition in your head is also really important. For me, the timing, I've always known when it's the right time to change something. And the more I trust it, the better things go. The more I resist it, um, typically the more challenging things will be for me. I'll have a health issue pop up, um, you know, or there's a technical glitch, or I just feel really not good about something. And so I've started to honor my, um, my clairaudience, my clairvoyance, my clairsentience, basically just saying, you got to go this way, Nicholas, and I listen. So listen to yourself. That's part of being present. And I think this is really powerful because once you are present, then you can let the universe start to whisper and start to show you what to do. One last example that I would like to talk about is <laughs> this furry little creature here uh, who I've many times said is one of my soulmates on this planet. Um, Apollo was a wonderful example in manifestation for me because two years prior to adopting Apollo, uh, I practice a technique that I, I kind of learned in yoga as well. There's a meditation that you can do when a mom is expecting a child to bring in a high soul. And what I wanted to do was bring in a really high soul when I adopted my pet. And I sat down one evening and closed my eyes and I reached out into the cosmos far out there. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this is like a, an old soul, a spiritual entity from the other reach of the galaxy. But I went way out in space and I said, I'm looking to bring in a really high energy for a pet. And I had an idea. I couldn't decide if I wanted a Yorkie, a Lhasa Apsa, uh, or Maltese or something in between. And I got this mix, which is sometimes what happens. If you're not specific, you're going to get everything. Um, so what I was specific on, though, was that um, I was a spiritual teacher. I knew I was on that path. I needed a, a pet that could be patient as I'm doing all of this work. So I wanted something that could be quiet, that could be also on a spiritual path that I could learn from, not necessarily be a teacher, but might open me up, open up the heart space. And so when I connected with the soul out in the universe, I said, I'm ready to love. Um, I'm, I have a space in my life and a space in my heart for you. And all I really want back is love as well, a little bit of respect of the space 
that you're going to live in. So I wanted an animal that wasn't going to tear apart everything, that wouldn't make too much noise, and that would be okay if I sat here and talked to this little box <laughs> to connect with all of you. And again, I got everything that I wished for and more. And that would be the last piece that I would say is that don't be afraid to include all of this or better. And Apollo is the basic uh, bumper sticker for or better. He's everything that I could have dreamed of and more. So, um, and I, I just let go and it took two years for me to be ready to actually adopt a pet. I had a very powerful meditation. I felt the energy of Apollo and then I waited and I just said to the universe, I'll know when, show me when. And one day I called up my mom and I said, it's time, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta adopt a, a dog now. And I started looking at websites. I talked to a coworker who helped me connect with the uh, rescue where I found this wonderful resplendent being and uh, the rest is history. But uh, I, I knew in my heart, and the interesting thing is when I met Apollo, he was about two years old. So it, it really connected with the timing of when I did the meditation. So this is an example of putting together the attributes. I didn't know exactly what he was going to look like, and I guess I didn't care. It was more important that he was loving, that he had this wonderful energy of healing to him, and that he knew that I loved him and that I would love and that he would love me back. I just wanted this sort of symbiotic relationship. So he's a friend, he is a soulmate, and he also has opened up my heart. So I would say he's a teacher, but not in the way that, uh, you know, I often say with partners, when you're looking for love or companionship, you're really not looking for someone to teach you difficult lessons. I think he just taught me how to love more. So that was a great, again, a great example of and more or, or better. So uh, let's go ahead now and get into the meditation portion of this. I know this is something that I'm looking forward to and I think it will help all of you as well. All right, uh, so close your eyes now, relax a little bit. I'd like you to unwind the energy in your shoulders and your neck before we begin. So take your shoulders and roll them up, roll them back, relax. Take the heart center here and really kind of um, push it forward a bit as we take this first breath. Uh, nice deep inhale. Open up the chest cavity, let go, exhale, relax your body, relax the posture, and if there's anything um, that you feel that is still tight, just kind of <laughs> let it go a little bit, okay? If you're like me, you probably hold on to a lot of tension in your neck, so we're going to do a little bit of work now to let that go and to open that up so that you can really allow for a connection between the heart and the upper chakras. Be gentle with yourself as you move your neck. Uh, clockwise and then counterclockwise, picking the direction that feels best for you first. Imagine that as you're letting go of the tension that you're holding here around your neck, around your jaw, and all the way up into the cranium, that you're actually going through and releasing the program. Each time you go through, you're letting go of old thoughts, old ways of being, and just allowing for your mind to open up. It's almost as if you're unwinding uh, that very core part of your brain that sometimes holds on to the fight or flight mode. So take one last revolution as you go around and really let go of everything and then breathe in and out. Excellent. And then when you're done, just come back to center and let's do one last breath and really center. Good. I'd like you to take your hands and rub them together. I did this for Aries, so I want to do this for everybody. Put your left hand on your heart, put your right hand on top, close your eyes with me. I want you to picture the most beautiful um, emerald green color that you can, like you'd see in the Wizard of Oz or on a spring day. Here in uh, something beautiful in Southern California is that after the rainy season, once we get into like February, March, April, a lot of the mountains and hills start to turn this beautiful lush green. It's almost it's not quite like you're in Ireland, but it reminds me of that. All of a sudden, the, the city comes alive. So I want you to imagine what it looks like in the spring wherever you live. Seeing the, um, the green that's starting to paint the landscape after there's been a period of snow, of uh, barrenness. And I want you to start to see this beautiful life starting to take form, starting to um, shape itself in the, the landscape. In your hands, I want you to imagine that you have a seed, something that you want to plant over the course of the next few months. For some of you, this could be a relationship. For others of you, it could be a job. Uh, it could also just be a part of your personality or, or your life that you want to change. 
see that seed, hold it in the left palm, put that against your heart, put your right hand on top of it, and start to allow your heart to feed that little kernel of hope, that, that little seed that you've planted. The energy of the heart is the same color that we were just talking about, this beautiful bright green. And the stereotypical red is not the color of the heart. Um, it's green, it's growth, it's abundance. So start to feel that green energy pulse through that little tiny seed that you've planted. Start to see the seed grow and merge with your heart so that each and every breath that you take, each and every step that you make throughout your life, you're going to be carrying that dream, that hope, just like an Olympian would carry a torch with them. And it's going to glow with this beautiful bright green color. And people around you are going to start to feel and see and imagine that dream that you have as well. I want you in this moment to think, not only can it happen, but it will happen, it is happening, and that you are an agent of that change. Think to yourself, I have the power, the persistence, and the presence of mind to make this happen. I release the doubt, the fear, the uncertainty that's been holding me back. I feel a sense of excitement, joy, and anticipation of what tomorrow will bring. I'm going to allow the universe to surprise me in a positive way. This can happen sooner than I imagine. I'm going to let go and let God. In other words, I'm going to let the universe carry me through. I'm going to allow the momentum and the trajectory to be faster, to be more fabulous, to be more resplendent than I ever imagined it could be. Put your hands in your lap. Just open up your heart for a second. Really pull your shoulders back. Sit up tall. Allow this brilliant green energy that we've created now to shine out on the horizon, to light up the future that you're creating. Carry it with you every day like a torch. Feel that power. Feel that light. Gently open your eyes. Take your hands again together and rub them until you can feel warmth, heat, friction. Stop now and create a circle of light around you, spreading that heart energy, infusing your auric field with green light, <sighs> taking a deep breath and just allowing that to be with you. Again, for some of you, if you want to imagine that you're carrying a torch, you can do that too. And now I just want to gift you with this reality. You are one step closer to manifesting. Not only is it possible, but it's happening. But you have to stay present. You have to be persistent. And just keep an open heart and an open mind over the course of the next few months and see what happens in your life. Remember, your thoughts are very powerful. You have the power to change them and in turn to change your destiny. Think of the possibilities, not what is going to not happen. Be specific as you begin to manifest. Let go, let God, and then just be present. Thank you so much. This was my gift to you in the new year. Uh, make sure to check out the links below so that you can look at the February live readings. And if you would like to say thank you for meditations like this, for all of the live videos that I've been doing over the past few months, Feel free to join me on social media. You can also become a patron or you can book an appointment. I'll see all of you very soon, whether it's a live video or another instructional video like this. Um, until then, I just want to say take care of yourselves and embrace the opportunities in the new year.